Good morning, everybody, or afternoon. I'm not sure when I'm going to post this video. Let me adjust this camera a little bit. There we go. Welcome back to Snooze at Home. Today is, yet again, not another snooze video. I promise I'll keep doing them. Man, my hands look so white. The white balance on this video is twisted. Pardon the glare as well. Got some new lights in the garage. They are a little bit too bright, so I'm going to adjust them in the future. Today, we're going to be taking a look at Perique Tobacco. There we go. This is half a pound of genuine St. James Parish Perique. This stuff is really, really expensive. Um, and if you are saying, well, tobacco can sometimes be expensive, this is no different. When you talk about expensive tobacco, typically what's assumed is that you're talking about a premium cigar. That, that Those can sometimes go upwards of like two, three hundred dollars, or a very rarefied pipe tobacco or something like that. But very hardly when you mention expensive tobacco are you actually talking about the raw ingredient themselves. To put it into perspective, the average consumer can buy, I would say, a pound, maybe two pounds, of Burley or Virginia for about 20 bucks in the United States. Of course, manufacturers and, um, you know, people who work with it will probably be able to get it for less, but that's how it's commonly sold to consumers. This stuff, I think, was 50 bucks for this half pound. Cigar Leaf, by the way, comes in at the same price as the Burley or the Virginia for, you know, hobbyists like myself. Maybe a pound of fine wrappers will cost something like $30, but nowhere near the cost of this stuff. This stuff is expensive. It also likes to mold. I have had Perique before. I haven't tasted pure Perique, which is what we're going to do in this video, so stay tuned. But I have owned Perique in the past. Um, I opened up the bag, I smelled it, and then I put it... I don't think I would stored it completely improperly. It was just in a Ziploc bag. But it went moldy on me. I think I, I acted on it too late to actually do anything with it. I plan to do every kind of thing that I can with this before the entire half pound is gone. This should already be threshed and stripped, meaning that we're just dealing with the leaf here, no leaf rib or anything like that. So I really think we're going to get our money's worth for this half pound. Let's, let's crack open our Perique. This stuff is vacuum sealed, with good reason, again. Like I said, it's pretty touchy stuff. Now, in another video of mine, I said that uh, this stuff was one of the weakest tobaccos, and then many of you corrected me, I assume, saying that this is one of the strongest tobaccos. I think I might have been getting it confused with Latakia, but some other viewers said that this was indeed weak, and maybe it's strong, and maybe there is some confusion. I'm leaning towards this being strong. Some people have said that the nicotine in this transforms into something else. That's really weird. I don't think that's the case. By the way, if you enjoy this kind of content, please consider supporting me on Patreon. Patreon's back up and running. Every dollar goes back into doing fun stuff like this. Let's go ahead. Let's go ahead and have a whiff of our St. James Perique. Cheers. Ooh, that smells weird. Have a look at the color, too. I want to squeeze the bag out a little bit. This stuff is moister than tobacco typically arrives. Nearly black, but it's got some flecks of, like, dark chocolate brown in there, and the autofocus does not want to let you see. Look at that, and this stuff is nice and dense, too. Let me smell that little thing. Because it's got a pretty... <sighs> it smells like dark cocoa. Smells a little bit like mold. <laughs> now this stuff is not moldy whatsoever. I've I've like turned the bag over a couple times. Mold on this guy will develop in sort of like a white speckle type of thing. Look at that sheen. That's really cool. It's not mold like mold mold. It's mold like um God, that's such a weird thing to put your finger on, but it's something I've smelled before. I don't want, just want to say, like, ammonia, because it's not the true tobacco ammonia smell. It smells like blue cheese. It smells like blue cheese. Dark chocolate and blue cheese. That's what we're dealing with. 
Um, what are my intentions for this video? I picked up this little Meerschaum guy at a antique store, fabulous little antique store. Can't recommend it enough. I might put it in the comments below. Um, this is a really nice little thing. It's never been smoked before and I have a couple plans. So we're going to smoke this straight. I'm going to give you my impressions on the flavor, on the strength, what I feel about it, what it's like. And then we are going to do what many of you have requested which is do the Aleister Crowley tobacco. Apparently Aleister Crowley, famous magician and weirdo that he was, was a big fan apparently of smoking St. James Perique and he did go to great lengths to say it was St. James Perique and not Acadian Perique. That is a, it's, that's tobaccos made elsewhere in the same region, typically of the same sort, but considered not to be of the same quality. St. James Perique and he would soak that in rum. Now, I've got some of the Kraken. I'm not a big uh, rum drinker. This is probably not what Alistair Crowley used. He probably used a... Um, if I were him, I'd probably use something like a Jamaican rum, maybe Ray and Nephews, um, maybe some other type of spiced rum or dark rum, maybe a Cuban rum. But this is what... I wanted to check because we are at number one. I think that the Kraken tastes really good. It's a really nice, thick, heavy rum. It's a little bit overproof. Um, it's got a lot of spices inside of it. And I think those spices might transfer pretty well to an already very spicy tobacco. Just take it over the top. Alistair Crowley added rum to the tobacco in some weird convoluted, uh, exercise to try and draw more nicotine or enhance the nicotine of the tobacco itself. That's bubkiss science, but uh, I hope it makes a pretty good tasting one. I got the spiced rum because I want to compare how different alcohols influence the taste of tobacco. So I've got the finest 12-year Highland Scotch single malt whiskey you can buy, Costco, Kirkland Signature, of course. You guys know I'm a fancy little guy. And we're going to be putting both of these into two jars. We're going to be letting them sit for a little while. I don't think this is going to need to sit for that long. They are, you know, people who talk about Aleister Crowley go to great pains to mention that it was rum soaked. So the t tobacco is probably submerged in rum. We're going to submerge it in rum. We're going to submerge it in scotch. We're going to leave it for 30 minutes. We're going to take it out, dry it off a little bit. And then we're going to smoke those two in this meerschaum after it's been well cleaned and see how the tobaccos react with different types of alcohols. I forgot my cutting board, so I'll be right back. Top chef, everybody. Let's go ahead and get some tobacco onto the tray here and make sure that you guys can see this. And I think we're gonna be, just chop that snippet off right there. Get this thing rolled out. Beautiful looking leaf. Look at that transparency. This stuff is super oily too. Wow, wow, wow. <sighs> really nice. I'm going to roll this up and we'll chop up our little twist here. Come on. If you guys saw the cigar rolling video, you already know that I'm not good at this. Uh, looks like it's taken off here. There we go. There we are. Now let's double that onto itself and prep some chunky ribbons ouch shit well it's not a great knife but it is sharp there we go some nice rough little coins I'll fluff those out a little bit so what I'll do, and that seems like enough to pack at least half a bowl here, I am going to soak this guy in the rum so that while we're smoking the Perique itself, whoop, 
while we're smoking the Perique solo, this guy can take up some of the rum. That is soaked. There's like a little drink there. Did you guys know, a couple years ago, they tried to make a Perique flavored vodka or something? Put a picture up on screen and show you what I'm talking about. Yeah, that's looking weird. We'll set that aside for now. And let's do the same thing with the whiskey. Really afraid to touch this with my hands. I'm, I'm very scarred from the rotting experience. That guy looks good. We'll go ahead, this stuff is pretty dense already, so I'm just gonna cut it up as is. I'm gonna get this back in center. It's releasing a really, like, strong dark chocolate smell as I cut into it. From what I understand, Perique, before it undergoes fermentation, is a type of burly. There is a little bit of a burlyishness here. There we go. That's actually a little bit more than we need for the scotch experiment. Let's get our tobacco in. Again, about enough for half a bowl. We may as well commit here. Just dump the whole thing in. Are we soaked? Not yet. That's soaked. Crowley apparently knew a lot about tobacco as well. He wasn't just some, some like, uh, some dude who was new to the whole thing, who tried to get the nicotine out in a weird way. And now let's prep ourselves an actual bowl of Perique. Maybe I can, ooh, that's too much. Whoa-oh. Can I pull a single leaf out? Come on. Yeah, I don't want to go too much here. That might have been too much here. Get this guy back inside. That was too much. I'm just going to risk it and put some of this back. Because I really don't need to smoke all that perique. There we go. Get this guy folded up. Squeeze all the air out. And... I only have these gigantic ziplocs. Let's get this guy cut up. Really taken aback with the beauty of this leaf. Really stellar stuff. Let's try making our roll here. This one seems like it's playing a little bit nicer than the other. Let's get it cut up. I used to have a tobacco shredder. I have no clue what happened to it. There we go. 
It is still a little moist, so I am going to just kind of let it hang out for a little bit. Just to get dry. Break up some of these ribbons here. Let it hang out for a little bit just to get dry. Dry enough to smoke. Don't want it to lose any of its oils. And I'll be right back. Let's load up our first bowl. This might actually be more than a bowl. Actually, the bowl on this is pretty big. But let me... Let me dice this guy up a little bit more. That should be better. Do 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 do. And we're off. Maybe I'll smoke this whole bowl. I don't know. We'll see. Go ahead and light it up here. Taste is really, really good. There's a little bit of that spiciness that Perique's known for, but most of it is just like this really intense, burly style dark chocolate goings on. Really curious to see how this develops in the bowl. Actually, just got a little bit of that spiciness in the back of my throat here. might still be a little too moist but that's okay we will power through I'll see you on the couch it's nice it's not bad it really is not bad there's like a little bit of I get closer so you guys can see me it's like a little bit of bitter walnut on the retro hail, right now at least. It's not dark chocolate. There is really no chocolatey note to this at all, now that I'm into the bowl itself. Smoking a little bit hot, which I expected because I think I didn't dry it out long enough. It's just really nutty. It's just really walnutty. There we go, that's a proper light. The room note smells really good. There's a spice, a little bit of a grip. It's a lot like the bitterness that you would get out of a cigar. But yeah, most of it is just really, really nutty. Walnutty, black walnutty, bitter walnutty. The pipe is smoking really well too. I'm going to smoke this down for a little while, and then I will tell you guys what I think, and then we'll move on to the alcohol-soaked ones. But so far, so good. There's no brittiness. There's no... nothing that I would traditionally expect from type, like, pipe tobacco. There's really no sweetness.
Yeah. It's just kind of bitter nuts. I'll be back. It's been about 40 minutes, maybe 30. I don't know. Did some work in the garden, did some watering, harvested some stuff. The smoking qualities on this are pretty good. Nice creamy smoke with a lot of body. A lot of what I can taste all throughout is like bitter walnut. So imagine like, if you, I don't know if you ever had this, but frangelico. And then you tone it down a little bit and then you take all the sweetness out of it and you're just left with this like bitter nut sensation. <laughs> it's pretty heavy in terms of like uh, nicotine. So this stuff, while I was picking the, and you can probably tell I'm pretty pensive right now. Pretty relaxed. While I was picking uh, up in the garden, I felt myself kind of getting like a little sleepy, a little sway, a little woozy, in fact, perhaps. But no headache, nothing like that. This is not um, pipe smoking very hardly ever gives me a headache, if at all. Um, but it's got, it's got nicotine, I'll tell you. Um, yeah, not a lot of spice to it, but when I retrohale, that's when the spice comes on. And the, the Perique kind of has like the cigarish note to it. I don't know if you guys have ever gotten this from Perique or any blends that are heavy in Perique, but the cigarish note is pretty close to something like fire cured, like cigars that involve some percentage of fire cured in their makeup. Uh, it, it comes in and out twice. I tasted a cocoa note, like a dark chocolate note, a very, very identifiable like cocoa note, but that was only twice and then never again. So I wouldn't say that that's a predominant note in this. I think it's just a characteristic of the cigar note that's present. The pipe is fun. The retrohale on this is vicious though. There's something cigarettish about this too. Um, not super cigarettish, but it's just like this low-lying ash taste quality to it. No tongue bite. I don't know that I had ever smoked this again on its own. It's not a blend, and as far as single tobacco smokes go, this is pretty one-dimensional. There's nothing really happening with it. There's no bread, there's no sweetness, there's no fun. It's honestly a pretty boring smoke after a while. I'm hoping that the rum and the scotch kind of fixes that up. I think I am just about done with this bowl. Yeah, it's okay. It's strong in nicotine, so I was wrong about that. You guys are right. Um, I'm excited to blend with it, but not really to smoke it again. So let's smoke it again. Ooh. Alright guys, just woke up basically to smoke this. It's been a full night. It's a little dry. This is the rum one, by the way. And it smells very subtly of rum. And this is sort of the problem that I've had whenever I was flavoring any kind of tobaccos with uh, alcohols, is that once the alcohol evaporates, the flavor that you're trying to impart to it pretty much goes away completely. But let's have a look. It's probably also going to be at a much better humidity for smoking than the first bunch. It's nice so far. Something cigarish about it. I like the other one. Let's see if we can tease out any rum. This will be the Alistair Crowley mix, by the way. Mm. 
this tastes like. Tastes like Perique. There's nothing different about this. Even though it's dry, I didn't cube this up by the way, this is just the, the really coarse ribbon that we started off with. Maybe I didn't pack it firm enough. Even though this is dry, it's really not catching as well as I expect. That retro hail is vicious. Vicious retro hail, super peppery in the nose, white pepper on the sides of the tongue, and then dap back down inside. I think that might just be because I'm getting a lot more smoke because this is dry instead of the moisture stuff, which kind of had some moisture to soften it out. Or maybe it's the rum. But I can't taste any rum spices, I can't taste any vanilla, I can't taste any rum notes like I'm expecting. I just taste the Perique. So I'm thinking Alistair Crowley was never mentioned that he was actually trying to flavor the Perique with rum, he just wanted to draw the nicotine out a little bit more. So maybe rum is really just the only spirit he had on hand. and. It was an exercise in trying to get that nicotine up. Stronger, spicier stuff than I had yesterday. I can see why people, <laughs> wow, I can see where people become afraid of pure Perique. Maybe I didn't smoke, or er, smoke. Maybe I didn't steep it long enough in the rum. I don't think that's the case, it was pretty wet in there. When I pulled the tobacco out of the rum, it smelled like rum. It didn't really smell like Perique. It's okay, it's nothing special. I'll smoke down the rest of the bowl, and then we'll try the scotch one, see where we are. Okay, I'm back. Let's do the scotch. Now yesterday, when I... By the way, if you want to take a look at it, there it is. Yesterday, when I started soaking and took this out of the soak for hours, it had a really distinct smell of scotch, and I was hoping that that would carry on into the tobacco when it dried. Unfortunately, that hasn't happened, but that's okay. We're gonna try it out anyway. We're gonna see if any of those scotch notes have stuck around. If I do this again, and I can't see myself doing it again, but if I do it again, I'll probably, I don't know, make some kind of scotch or rum sauce. Not you know, properly just straight scotch or straight rum, but something like a syrup, something like that, where it's a little bit easier to apply and the sugar might make everything stick around to it. Because I think that just straight alcohol is way too volatile for this, but that's apparently what Crowley did. Let's... Tasted something different. Don't know if that was a like a hallucination or something, but that was a little different. Got some tea on the side to wash this down with. So 
So far it just tastes like straight break. Thick, meaty, cigarish. Sort of peppery, sort of astringent in the sides and the back of the mouth. nothing too crazy. I'm going to smoke this for five minutes to see if I detect anything different, but I think that this particular experiment is a bust. I still had fun smoking the Perique though. Had a lot of pipe blends with Perique inside. Elizabethan I think is the most popular. I've also had Orlix Golden Sliced. Um, don't think I've had that much more with Perique. As lame as it sounds, I'm mostly an aromatic smoker. Because I don't smoke a pipe that often, and when I do, it, I find that aromatic blends just work really, really well with my palate. Yeah, I'm going to sit here for a couple of minutes. We're going to see if this is any different, and then we're going to close out this video. I'll see you soon. It doesn't taste any different. It's the same old Perique. The Perique is nice. It's weird, it's simple, it's, it's definitely a blending component. It's a condimental tobacco, it's nothing that you would smoke on your own, but that's not because it's something like outrageously strong strength nicotine wise is really on par with some things that I've had before that are blends that are manufactured. It's nothing crazy. You don't need to be afraid of it. Yeah, the strength is not what it's chalked up to be. It is stronger. But smoking three bowls of it now, this one's technically a half bowl. But smoking three bowls of it now, I really, I don't think that the strength is anything to like blow you away or anything like that. As far as what the alcohol has done, it's done nothing. It's done fuck all. It's really just, um, I guess it is just something weird that Crowley did, which wouldn't be the first time Crowley would have done something weird. And I admit I'm not a Crowley historian. I know a little bit about him. But I'm not one for all that spooky stuff, so... I don't know that much about him. I'm sure that one of you guys do. Smoking the Meerschaum has been fun. This is a really nice pipe. It's handled up to three pretty much bowls in, well, no, I had the first one yesterday, but two bowls back to back. Dottle comes out super easy. It's very light. It's very clenchable, and this one's pretty big. It's not the biggest that I've seen, but it's lighter than Briar. I don't know what this is. Probably acrylic. Look at that guy, too. Come on. Come on. Oh, that might be the best you're gonna get. The detail in this guy, it's got little imperfections, it's got a crack here, it's got some stuff going on. But the detail on this is the nicest that I've seen on a carved portrait. It's got pupils, it's got hair on the eyebrows, everything is in the right place. Sometimes these carvings can look like... They can look a little bad. Is what I'm saying. Anyways. Anyways, I hope you guys had a good time watching me smoke all this Perique. My verdict is, it's definitely Perique. I can't wait to make some... Some people have said that some snuff out of it is good. I think that we should turn this into a snooze. And maybe make the world most expensive dip 
just to get some uh, just to get some attention. A lot of you guys have wanted dip for a long time, something nobody has done before. So I'd be proud to see how that turns out. Anyways, if you like this video, please consider subscribing. If you really like this video, please consider donating on my Patreon. Every penny goes back into making more of these videos, trying out new little experiments and things like that. Anyways, I'll see you guys next time. Peace.